You know, you had a choice to make today. Every one of us had a choice to make. We had to choose whether we're going to get up. We had to choose, decide whether we're going to go out into the heat and go to church and fellowship with brothers and sisters. We had a choice. We had a choice. Every one of us has a choice. Every day we get to make that choice. We're going to talk in a little bit. I want you to ponder on this question. Why would a loving God allow people to go to hell? Okay. Why would a loving God allow people to go to hell? Okay, you ponder on that. But first, if you got a card, we're going to ask you to, if you had filled that out, we're going to put that in the thing. But at the same time, um, if you hadn't had a chance to make out your check or give your tithe and, uh, in the boxes on the wall or drive through, we went through the drive through the other day and we found $132 cash in there. Lexi, there was no note, no nothing, you know, so... I guess we're going to have to get somebody to build us a little box so they can have one of those papers like they do at the bank, you know, deposit here and all that. Okay. We may have to do that. So, so it, it, it's, it's pretty cool. But uh, um, God is so good. And uh, uh, we appreciate your faithfulness. Um, you guys are very extremely gracious. Um, you know how to honor Jesus. You know how to give him the very first part of everything. Not only your time, if, you're, if you volunteer here, if you, if you teach here, if you hold a class here, if you clean here, the things that you do here, the worship team, you always give him your first part. And it, he loves it. And so if you would, you make out your check if you haven't had a chance to the church. And so um, they'll be by. I want to pray over it because um, I believe God wants a debt-free people. He wants this church debt-free so we can accomplish more for the kingdom. And uh, our funds can go further than ever before. So, Father, I thank you right now for this group of people in this church, God. They are faithful. You know it. You know their hearts. You love it. All you want to do is pour out more. You are the God that is more than enough. You are so faithful to us, sir, in every circumstance. You're the one that told us to put you to the test. So we thank you, sir, as we do that, that you always come through. There's never been a time where you failed us, never will you fail us. So we thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. And we thank you for the more. Father, I speak to every, every checkbook, every savings account, every um, stock, uh, stock account that they've got, every barn and every uh, place that they can put stuff in. I thank you that it's coming full. I thank you that the businessmen have more than enough work, more than enough workers, and every one of their jobs is prosperous. So we thank you, Father God, as the money comes in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We thank you, sir, that it's coming in on every wave. We thank you as we are faithful to do it, that that wave's coming in all the time. So we thank you, Father, for it. God, just be with our children as they're outside having a blast today. So just bless them abundantly as, as they embrace the joy of Jesus in the house of God. And everybody said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So if y'all would uh, come and receive that, we would appreciate it. Hallelujah. Why would a loving God allow people to go to hell? And you're asking me, well, Eric, I thought you were preaching on Mark. Well, I got interrupted. You know, as I spent, I was in the, I was in the holy place, the secret place, and I get a phone call, and somebody is distraught. They are just upset, totally upset. Why would a loving God allow so and so to go to hell? I don't understand. So I hung up the phone without an answer. Just kidding. That's supposed to be a joke time. There, you're supposed to laugh at. You guys are like, you really did that, Pastor? You really did that? No, I didn't do that. I listened. I listened. I listened. I gave him my answer, and then I went back into the secret place. And the very first thing I heard was Hosea 4, 6. And God said, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He said, because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. 
the New Living Translation said this, my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. And, you know, I've had people, well, you know, I'm saved. I gave my life to Jesus. I said, when is the last time you cracked open this right here? This rhema word, this rhema word that Jesus said, he said he was a word that became flesh. So why would a loving God allow people to go to hell? You know, first of all, I want to establish something real quick. Second Peter 3, 9. This is New King James. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Here is the answer, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I believe, and I believe the scripture bears it out, that hell was not created for people. Okay? God did not create hell for people. Is there a hell? You better believe it. Jesus talks about it a lot. But Matthew 25, verse 41 says, Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Yep. Hell was originally created for the devil and his angels. Okay, That was the original purpose of hell. That's where they're going to go. There's another scripture over in Isaiah about the, uh, also that uh, hell is being enlarged because people have rejected Jesus, okay? So why would God allow anyone to go to hell, okay? Would God send one somebody to hell? No, he would not. That is not his heart. God's whole design and whole scheme of everything is he wants a family. From the very get-go, that's why he brought in Adam and Eve. He wanted a family, so we were made in his image and in his likeness, and we have a choice to make. He gave them a choice to make. They chose to disobey, so therefore they were kicked out of the garden, and that's how the whole plan of salvation, God had a plan anyway, just in case they chose not to obey. And they rejected God, okay? So here we are in today's where everybody, you know, well, man, I've been going to church all my life. I never killed anybody. I never did that. I've held, you know, I'd love my grandma, you know. I said, well, I'm glad that you do. That's awesome. But have you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Well, I tell you what, I pay my tithe every bless God week. I'm in that house. I go there every week. I'm in there. I said, that's is awesome. I said, but what about your relationship with Jesus? Have you believed on Jesus and do you have a relationship? Well, I tell you what, Pastor, you don't have to. All you got to do is be good. Well, that's not what the Word says. And the Word says that you must, and if you will, believe on the name of Jesus. He said, if you'll repent and turn from your sin, he says, come on in. It's family time. It's family time. And God's got a family, got a plan. So is God going to send somebody to hell? No. We choose to go to hell. It's our choice. What? Yeah. You remember the, you remember the, the cross, the guys on the cross? And, and, the, and the, the, ones, the one he knew, he knew he was jacked up. But he also recognized that Jesus was something. And he said, God, hey, would you remember, would you remember me and talk to Jesus? Jesus said, hey. You'll be with me in paradise today. Now, the other guy either had to be tone deaf or couldn't hear or was just so, because I would have been, if I'd have been the other guy on the other side of the cross, hanging there and going, what did he just, what'd you say, man? So we're going to be with him in paradise. What would you, what'd you say? I would have done the same thing. Hey, 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 Jesus, um, I want to do what he did. But there's no record that he did what the other guy did. Ain't no record there, Okay. It's our choice. Look at somebody say, you've got a choice. you got to choose. God smiled on you today and on me today because we got up and went to church. We made a choice. I had an expectancy in my spirit like never before about this morning. I don't know why. 
God dropped a scripture that I gave, I gave out to the, to the worship team. And I said, God, what's going on? He said, something is going to change today in the heart of your church and the ministry today. I said, really? He goes, yes. He goes, there are people that are come today with an expectancy to encounter Jesus in a fresh, new, and living way. I said, awesome. He goes, when they come with an expectancy, he goes, I always like to show out and meet <laughs> that expectant person. So Gail Amdor came in pregnant today. Gail's pregnant. Man is expecting something to happen. He's either expecting a word from God or a confirmation from something, but he knows he's going to encounter Jesus, Holy Ghost, and God in his house because he's coming in and we're having a family gathering around the Father and around the throne. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So we got a choice. You got a choice to make. So I'm telling you that he is here. You know, the worship team, they just do what they're told to do. They know that they're called, you know, they work hard. You know, sometimes they don't want to go practice. You know, they've had a long day at work and they come in to practice. I know, I led worship for 35 years. Didn't want to. I said, Dude, Jesus, I got to go work with those guys. And no, not these guys. It was back in the day, back in Indianapolis with those people. We had 80 people in our worship team back then. So, and it was a three hour practice. And these guys thinking, three hours? You're crazy. We ain't doing three hours. And they don't, you know. <laughs> Amber's very merciful, you know, in that. But they come ready, ready to work, to prepare, because their job is to create, or we say create, an atmosphere for the Father. Okay, I came in here at 8 o'clock this morning. Andrew says, we got to get there early. I said, okay. So she was out there sweating, getting ready for, all the kids are outside on slip and slides, having a ball, just letting you know, they're having a blast. But... Um, so I sat in here, and I just turned up the music the way I like it, which is loud. And, uh, and it was nice, because it was kicking me in the chest, Brother Mike. Mike Ayers, we, it was like this thing, he said, boom, you know. And man, I was gone. And I just loving it. And he's begin to say, hey, there's people coming in here. So normally, at least on either on Saturday or Sunday, I go around and pray over every chair. So I did that this morning. I didn't get to last night. So I get just, just, just praying the spirit, walking around. Sometimes I'll stop over a chair and I'll let you know who you are in a minute because you're in that chair because there's this special thing going on. So um, I said, whoa, okay, I wonder what's going to happen there. But um, he says, he said, just spend some extra time here um, because um, Rhonda is going to be coming today and she's going to be sitting in that chair. So... That's Rhonda, by the way. It's real red. She's real red in the face right now, but she's, she's sitting in that chair where they just, you know how you, tr you try to go from something, you keep, you try to leap. Okay. All right. He goes, just a little more. I said, okay, okay, done. But nobody forced you to get up and come to church today, did they? Except maybe the kids, you know. Teenager, I didn't want to go today. That could be. Nobody forces us to pray. Nobody forces us to open up the word. Nobody forces us, you know, um, you know we, don't, we don't celebrate the, um, um, for example, when the dishes need to be done, you know, and, um, and we put them in the dishwasher, we don't sit there and say, oh, praise God for the dishwasher. But when your husband, oh, you do? But when your husband gets up without asking and he loads, he washes the dishes and does everything, you're going, oh my gosh. You got a truly appreciation for that man who made a decision nobody forced him to, but because he loved his wife, he decided to do the dishes. Because we love God, we decided to get up and I'm going to church. So God's sitting there going, hmm. Glad you're coming to church. You got an expectancy about you. You know, I don't know if you did or not, but God told me that there's people today that have an expectancy about them. Okay, so we have a choice. Now, 
The tough question is, why would anyone, God allow anyone to go to hell? So we established that God didn't want anybody to go to hell. We established that hell is for, was designed for the devil and his demons, not people. But we have a choice to make. We choose whether we go. I think here's even a harder question. Why would anyone reject a loving heavenly father? Why would anybody in their right mind reject a loving heavenly father? Why would they know if they even had a little question of it out, whether this thing was right or wrong, why would you reject a loving heavenly father who says, I freely give you all things. He said, I have made a way. I said, Jesus, I've given you power. I've given you the Holy Ghost. I've given you my word, the blueprint for life. And yet, we don't take advantage of what God's given us. So we reject. Man, has any of you ever been rejected before? Just me? Okay. Me and Michelle. Oh, you, y'all have? Okay. From what I understand, that is the, the hardest, the worst thing that ever can happen to a person is being rejected. Okay? And it is, and it's a well-known, well-documented. Jesus was rejected, and he died. We killed him. So we have a choice. So my Bible says that my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. So I begin to say, okay, God, let's find out about that. So where did I end up? In Proverbs. Proverbs 1, 7 says, fear of the, this is New Living Translation, fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. And that one jumped up and slapped me in the face. Okay? It says, fear the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Okay, Proverbs 9.10 in New Living Translation says, fear the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. How many have made a bad judgment call before or a bad decision before? Okay. Honesty, that's good. Okay. Knowledge of the Holy One. So who does that mean? Is that talking about Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, the the Word? Is that talking? Yeah, it's talking about all of it. Okay. So fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Psalms 111 verse 10 says in the New Living Translation, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Praise him forever. So in that, God began to ask me, what, he said, I want you to write down what are seven attributes of wisdom you would like to have in your life. Well, I guess I need to read some more Proverbs, find out where there's some more attributes. So I did. And I came up with um, 48 characteristics, and we're going to go line by line for 40. Just kidding. (laughs) There are 48 characteristics of true wisdom. I'm just going to read them to you quickly, okay? Compassion responsibility, positive attitude, integrity, acceptance, self-knowledge, detached concerns, adapting multiple perspectives, empathy, aliveness, appreciating ramifications, caring, attentiveness, commitment, desiring the good of the whole, cooperation, intuitive understanding, curiosity, willingness to risk, equanimity, fairness, generosity, self-acceptance, discernment, gratitude, deep understanding, hopefulness, wonder, humility, dedication, insight, joy, kindness, nurturance, self-investigation, openness, patience, self-actualization, peacefulness, reflectiveness, respect, self-sufficiency, serenity, 
sound judgment, truthfulness, vision, appreciating significance, and the breadth of considerations. Those are 48 attributes of wisdom, okay? Now, thank God for Logos 6, my Bible studying app that I use, uh, because that's where they came. Somebody did all that journey through there. But he told me to write seven attributes. I want you to write down this morning seven attributes of wisdom that you want in your life, okay? So that's your homework assignment for the week, is get along with God and find out what seven attributes of wisdom that you would like to have in your life. My number one was discipline, okay? I'm just being open and honest about it. So I'm making some changes. So that's one, another one that I wanted, okay? And the other one is knowledge. And um, then I got several more in here, okay? But find out seven attributes of wisdom that you'd like to have in your life. You know, you can, you can put it out, print it out on a piece of paper like this. You know, you can put it on your refrigerator. You can put it on your mirror someplace, okay? Seven attributes of wisdom I want in my life. And then, if you would go, Jenny has already put it on Facebook, the wisdom challenge for, uh, there's a book of Proverbs every day, uh, one for every day of the month, okay? And the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Okay, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay? In answering that first question, would God, why would God send anybody to hell? And the answer is he wouldn't. That's not his heart. That's not daddy's heart. After 30 or 40 minutes of conversing with this person on the phone, they realized that maybe they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. That's what we got to. Maybe they didn't fully grasp what the heart of Abba Father truly was. Okay? So I began to share with them. I said, here's some scripture. That is the foundation. I said, you don't have any knowledge of him or who he is. You know, well, I got this and this. I said, I understand about that. And I understand it's cumbersome. I understand it's hard to deal with. I understand all of that. However, the answer for every situation, whether you like it or not, I don't care what it is, is found in the word of God. Okay? His name is Jesus. Now, if you are willing to walk with me through this, I will be more than happy to disciple you, whatever you want to call it, counsel you, work with you, but you have to start with the biblical foundation that this is truth and everything else is a lie. If you're not willing to go through with this and do that, then you're probably not going to have a lot of success in what you want to do. And that had to sink in for a while because nobody had ever told them. She said, I was always told all I had to do was walk the aisle, say the prayer, and everything was going to be okay. I said, well, that's not true. I said, you've you received Jesus. You believe on Jesus. You repent and you turn the other way, and you begin to get into the Word of God, and you begin to discover who you are in Christ Jesus and what has been already purchased for you. They said, I have never heard that before. I said, I understand. I said, it's okay. I said, but the Bible says, (laughs) 
that you're destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I said, so we tried to piece this all together. So we end up going through and they ended up, you know, receiving Jesus. And uh, it wasn't there. I couldn't look in their eyes. But, you know, the tears over the phone may have an, been an indication of maybe they did have an experience over the phone. Because I believe there's no time or place in the realm of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit can move whenever He wants to. Okay.